This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here at the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is a show we talk with people in and around and maybe formally in indie wrestling. Uh, if you look at our guest list, list, I guess, in the last couple of months, um, including, you know, uh, TV world champions and things like that. But I'm very excited. We got a, a sort of a return, first time for the Indie Mayhem Show, but return, but we talked to uh, 11 years ago. On the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Bubba the Bulldog, but for some business, uh, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find all the great podcasts, including past episodes of this and a lot of people we've interviewed over the years here and on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, including uh, other podcasts uh, for uh, Fight Society, Rise Wrestling, Strong Pod, uh, and uh, of course, the Monday Mayhem Show, where we've just been kind of talking about Disney Plus, because that's how we feel about Raw right now. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of where we go. Really big Lego report this week by the way uh also if you have uh if you you, you have want to drop a line to us hit us up at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com 412-206-WMF0 if you have questions for somebody we've announced on the show or because there's so much wrestling there's so much wrestling uh obviously we can't get everybody or think of everybody that we should talk to if you think have somebody you think we should have on the show please drop us a line over there or on our social media at mayhem show or at us indie wrestling and uh we will uh try to get them try to get them on the phone in the studio go to them sometimes whatever we can do like i said back here on the studio first time or back here on the show first time in the studio as bubba the bulldog Right here, right across from me, on the couch. Awesome. How you doing, sir? This is awesome. I'm fantastic. I am I apologize. Last time you were on, also, we had uh, Mayhem Missy, who knows your theme song by heart, and what? I think sang you onto the show. <laughs> really? <laughs> if I recall. Although I do have to tell you, you know, especially working a heel as a heel, having a, like, customized... So I had it done for... So the first WWE dark match mm-hmm. I ever did in my entire life... Um, no, no, I take that back. So the first WWE match I ever did in my entire life, I'm the only person still alive. Because it, oh, it was me and Yokozuna against the British Bulldog and Owen Hart. First WWE match was a house show at the Civic Arena. Did you know this? No, I, 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 I don't know if we talked about this before. Yeah, so cause... the first WWE match I did ever in my entire life was me and, like I said, Yokozuna against the British Bulldog and Owen Hart. So I came out to Yoko's music. <laughs> um, and then the second thing I ever did for a house show was it was and this is a great story because it was gold dust working as a baby mm-hmm. against mankind and i was handcuffed to paul bearer <laughs> yeah true story was so it- but here's the funny part of it uh so uh harvey whippleman was sort of like the guy that ran around and got everything yeah events. yeah yeah so there was no handcuffs mm-hmm. so harvey had to run around and try to find his handcuffs right so he goes and gets like those plastic handcuffs you had when you were like three years old mm-hmm. but they, they w- just have the switch to let it go w- right <laughs> but they, but here's the problem they wouldn't fit around paul bear's wrist oh no so the entire match we had to hold hands so there was a spot where 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 Paul Bearer had me pinned up against the post and Mick was running at me full speed. And obviously I pulled him in the way to take the bump. But when he took the bump, we couldn't hold hands anymore. So miraculously, the handcuffs broke. And it was a, it was a great moment, and which, by the way, was the hardest I'd ever been kicked in my entire life to this date. I uh, Mick puts me in the mandible claw. I go down. And uh, I hear Mick mumbling through that mankind mask of his, right? <laughs> and, the, and the finish was the mask. What I somehow I had to get the urn and throw the urn to Gold Dust, and he had to hit him. So, uh, so I, he's mumbling something, and I'm like, then he's gone. I'm like, where on earth is Mick? I'm on all fours, and it, there, it was a house show, so there was no big pyro or there's no ramp or anything or stage. I look down the the, the runway, and Mick is all the way by the curtain. And he starts running full speed. I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> he he booted me in the head so hard that the side of my head felt like a Nerf football. And I'm like, when we get to the back, I'm like, 
dude, why did you kick me so hard? He's like, I was telling you to get back up. <laughs> So, oh, like, look, I get off on tangent, but back to the no, that's so, great. <laughs> so, the first match I ever did for for a dark match, uh, I used Slam by Onyx, right? Which I think every indie wrestler ever has used at one point in their lives, <laughs> especially coming through the nineties, right? right? Everybody used Slam, yeah, yeah. And uh, and they decided they were going to use me some more, so I got some, and I was like, well, okay. Um, so I got some guy, uh, he was a, a, a rapper in in, in New York, mm-hmm. to cut the theme that I've been using ever. I mean, I've used a million themes over the years. I use "Hate Me Now" by Nas mm-hmm. and all these different things. But when I decided that that there was a chance that something may happen at the time, I wanted my own custom theme music. And but it, but people sing it because it's mm-hmm. so easy to sing. Mm-hmm. So I'm working as a heel, and I look in the crowd and people are dancing. I'm like, "You're supposed to hate me. <laughs> what are you dancing for?" So that's sort of that's sort of a ten, uh, that was a ten second story that ter- turned into five minutes about my uh, and, and that's how we end up with our episodes of this, yes. especially when I have somebody who's been around for like geez, was it twenty five years? So Did I started I get the right yeah. number. So yeah, I, I saw your list as nineteen ninety five when I was took a, taking a quick peek at like cage yeah. match or something. So my first match ever was at McKeesport High School mm-hmm. for uh, PWX, mm-hmm. and you couldn't even get in the building. It was uh, me and uh, the late Sh- uh, Shocker Sean Evans against uh ba briggs and uh vince kaplack and uh and we were it was i mean it, it was P- uh, J- uh, jumping johnny defazio was my uh, manager johnny defazio yeah he was my manager uh the the late great uh pittsburgh Steeler uh justin strelzik uh, escorted me to the ring i had an entire posse of people it, it was and it was packed if you ask hank hudson hank hudson will tell you that it was the largest attendant attended indie wrestling show in the history of pittsburgh really that's true so and he, he and now he, it was over two thousand people if you follow his facebook he keeps track of yeah. everything so, you, so yeah. i mean that's pretty good yeah. so that's what he say he claims it's the because uh, there was well over two thousand people yeah, hank is a, interesting and we've we talked with him um i can't remember if it was on the show or if we were filming something else and he is like I feel like he's been there for almost everything significant in Pittsburgh wrestling history. Right? And not. Because like, I was listening to another podcast where he was involved in uh, uh, something, uh, uh, a recent Gregory Iron podcast, and like something in Cleveland he was involved with. I'm just really? like, this guy is everywhere. He's unbelievable. Like, how is Hank still doing this? He's, un- he's unbelievable. Jeez. He, he's un- And his facial expressions are the best ever. And his intro to wrestling shows even better. Oh, yeah. Oh, the knockdown, drag, drag out. Drag out, we- pillow post. And my favorite is kick. But wrestling. <laughs> it's so great with promotions we're doing some social media help for. We've been actually using his lines to, oh. because because I'm just like, well, they're so good. It's how it starts to show. It's it's what people are familiar Don't with. Don't you want Hank just one time to say ass? We did. You got him to say it? We, we, Fight Society has been going this. We're just completely tangenting everything. This is what the interview is going to be, guys. Um, no, well, Fight Society has been going, trying to do this hard edge thing the last right. couple of months, right? Mm-hmm. When we moved things to Friday, Friday Night Fights yep. kind of thing. And one of it was um, because he legitimately, at the Beast Brawl, the benefit yeah. for, for yep. the Beast, um, somebody said something about... Like he said, the rules of the of the Beast Brawl, which is you know a Royal Rumble kind of thing, right. and there was some specific s- stuff in there. And somebody's like, "We know how a thing works," and they, and he's like, "He's like, well, that's not this how this one works." And then they kept going on about stuff as like I think Brandon it was first out, and maybe Dean Dean Rafford right. was the second, and they kept going on. It was like it's not your damn night, asshole, or something. Like really? That. Not yeah. Hank? Yeah, it was Hank. Did he I, drop the mic? It. Yeah, no, no, wow. no. As I said, awesome. and it kind of we kind of became a thing for a couple months. So Love Hank Hudson. hard. I like to call it. Uh, I want hardcore Hank Hudson uh, as part of Fight Society as the My official gosh. announcer. So. That's awesome. Anyways, that's enough about Hank. He, yeah. He'll get his own show. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and now have to be two hours. Um, but um, anyways, so so you're talking. Uh, you know, you're telling tell us about uh, you know WWF dark matches and everything. Um, now you know. You the, help me with my context here. Were you radio on the radio first and then wrestling? Yes. So, so you're already a personality. It was really point. hard for me mm-hmm. when I got into the business because of radio. So I started in radio when I was 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And it was difficult for me because at that time, like I was a radio guy mm-hmm. who was wrestling. And when I trained, I tried to tell them that, hey, listen, I'm not doing this because of radio. I'm doing this because of wrestling. My dad. Um, little backstory. So my father grew up in Oakland and his father had a meat market on Semple Street in Oakland. So when Bruno San Martino and his mom moved to to Oakland, mm-hmm. my grandfather, like they didn't have any money, they didn't have any, they didn't have a lot of stuff. So my grandfather would give them food 
and say, pay me when you can kind of thing. So my dad would grow up with Bruno, grew up with Bruno. My uncle Mike grew up with Bruno. So it's sort of a cool thing. So Bruno was always a part of my life in some way, shape or form. Yeah. So I always had this passion for pro wrestling. So when I trained uh, to wrestle, I would tell the guys, I'm like, listen, I'm not doing this because I am. It's not a radio shtick. It's not a mm-hmm. radio bit. I mean, if I can use radio to help promote a show, I will, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Or if my presence helps draw people, that's cool. Um, but you need to know that I'm doing this because I love wrestling and I want to be a pro wrestler. And here's a look, you know, when I first started, half the locker room quit PWX. Did you? I don't know if you know that. Or no. Not. So, so the, the so the PWX used to, we we started something called. I think it was called, we called it the Berg, Berg Brawl. Mm-hmm. So the Berg Brawl, it was, it was all these wrestlers would come in for about, basically a battle royal. Yeah. And we started it out of necessity because what happened was half the locker room quit because they were mad. Mm-hmm. And they were mad that this radio guy was getting a push. Hmm. Right. And this is, uh, this has been 90s at this point, right? PWX 97, maybe. Okay. Maybe okay. 96. So I we didn't have we didn't have enough wrestlers yeah. to put on a show. Yeah. And I mean, I took my neighbor who happened to look like uh look like uh, Woody Harrelson. I took my neighbor and we we called him the natural born killer because the movie was out then. Remember the movie The Natural Born mm-hmm. Killer? Mm-hmm. We we taught him enough spots, right? So that he could come into a battle royal and get thrown out of a battle royal and not get hurt. Mm-hmm. So we brought we we took people that weren't even barely trained at wrestling because everybody was so angry and and these guys by the way in in the years gone by we've there's no hard feelings anymore. But at, at that yeah, moment, this is, this is 20 years ago. Right. So at that moment, though, they're like, well, who's this radio guy getting the push? And and I kept saying from day one, I'm like, listen, when I'm here, I'm one of the boys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like if if I went to a show and nobody got paid, I didn't get paid either. And, and we're we're talking about like these days, like, you know, there's so much crossover. I mean, in the mid 90s, other than like Vince doing it right yeah. on WWF, like that really didn't happen on, on this local level. No. Right. Yeah. It didn't happen at all. I mean, it, it didn't it, it didn't. There was nothing like that. And at that time, you know, Jim Miller was running out of the Eastland Mall and and he was he was it. I mean, Jim PWX was. The only independent, and and listen, you can say what you want. Mm-hmm. He's still running to this day, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and you know, and, and listen, and the Eastland Mall. I mean, we did the this, this the idea of doing the TV show, so yeah, all of that oh, was born into this there. TV show, right? Mm-hmm. And and the idea was, and I remember when, when we were talking about it. Uh, there you well, are, there you are, and I think circa 1998 at the Eastland Mall. Where did you get Mall. that from? Oh, we might have been digging through some classic Me, stuff in the Shocker, recent months. Shocker, Sean Evans. There's Shirley Doe. <laughs> Shirley Doe was Shirley Doe had. Dark hair, and so did I. <laughs> My God, look at that! Uh, this did is... I have a beard? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, w- wait a second. I don't th- m- listen. I've taken way too many bumps. <laughs> I do not remember ever having a beard in my life. I had dark. That is hair. Cer- that listen, is... Forget the fact that I had dark hair. I actually had hair. <laughs> um, but so yes, yeah, so we, you know, it was just an interesting time then, you know, mm. we, 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 we had this idea and, and, you know, and, and to run these shows. And I remember having a meeting with, with the TV stations and I'm, and I got it dirt cheap and I said, we're going to run late. Mm-hmm. We want everybody to come home from the bars, mm-hmm. have some beers, be half tuned up and for them to watch local independent wrestling. And, and the guy that was, uh, we called him the doctor, the announcer. Do you remember him at all? He, no. so he was called the doctor, right? Uh, he, th- disclaimer: I did not discover Pittsburgh independent okay. wrestling until 2006. Oh, okay, so myself, so not from there, the there was a guy that that was a do- that we called him the doctor. Mm-hmm. He I played f- uh, flag football with him, and and he had this great That's a great connection over the top <laughs> voice, right? And he didn't know much about wrestling, but he had so much energy, and and he said things that like he had no idea move. So like if somebody threw a suplex. I don't even know what he would call it, but he called it with so much conviction and excitement that he almost got like this cult following. And mm-hmm. this thing just took off. So all of a sudden, people were watching this wrestling at one, two o'clock in the morning, half tuned up on a Saturday night, and it explodes. Mm-hmm. It literally takes off. And next thing you know, the houses, you can't even get in the building. Mm-hmm. It was 
a blast back. It, then. And it sounds like a second coming of what studio wrestling was. I mean, it that, was. That, I mean that what that went away in what the early eighties, if I'm not mistaken, Jeez. something uh, like that. I, well, no, I think earlier than that. Earlier than that, know. yeah, not the, that old. The old w- WIIC. Oh no, that was so that was seventy. That was so I'm, I was I, I was I born like when I was like one one. It was already gone. Old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I didn't watch as a kid. So, but but again, it's like it feels like this is a. I mean, this is wrestling town. I I, I don't think you can call it you know anything else but that here in pittsburgh you yep. know by the the holy crap how much wrestling happens here on on a weekly basis right. <laughs> you know not let alone monthly um to that studio wrestling era to that late 90s era when yep. things were hot with you know the monday night wars and you guys were right in the middle of it i understand i understand one time pwx was uh, in between ecw and shotgun saturday night yep. on the local so it was like right <laughs> along with that stuff. Funny I mean, story is I that the, the funny story. You, there was a show that you could watch me on PWX, mm-hmm. and then I was on Shotgun Saturday <laughs> like the same night. True story. That's that's awesome. That's like I I know like Facade did like Ring of Honor and uh, uh, Impact in one week. One time. is that great? Like in recent months yeah. because of the taping schedule. It was awesome. Yeah, it, it's that's <laughs> but to be like, hey, that guy was just wait a minute. Yeah. So that's awesome. And there's an easy that ECW television program was so just. So different than anything else mm-hmm. out there at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and the way that they, they they edited it, and the way they showed it, and the way they featured it, it was just exciting. Uh, real quick, just a pause for a second because she's a who's who of wrestling is popping up in the chat room. John McChesney says hi, Bubba, founding fathers for life. Yeah, ab, ab, uh, ab, right, <laughs> right. I was a, I was around for that. I was behind yeah. the camera and behind yeah. production on that that era for sure. Yeah, but, uh, yeah founding fathers for life. Yeah, John McChesney, man. We've had, phew, these guys. This is a brotherhood. Mm-hmm. This is a brotherhood. Some of my favorite people. I mean, listen, my best friends in this entire universe mm-hmm. are professional wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I mean, like as a shoot, I mean, Super Hentai, Jimmy Vegas, Denny Gregory. Mm-hmm. We are, the four of us, are best friends in the real world. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really, you know, I got to be at uh, uh, the Super Hentai's wedding. I'm just like, oh, this, oh, the founding fathers are here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just, like, we're just, yeah. we're, we, we are... Uh, yeah, and and our stories are true. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, the, let's see. Uh, 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 Brand, Brandon K saying the doctor, what a gem. So he remembers uh, the doctor. He remembers the doctor. BC Steel remembers the doctor for twenty years. He's uh, wondered where that guy came from. Yeah. So so he played. So once again, you know, at that time I was trying to help. That's so all mm-hmm. I wanted to do was help. Mm-hmm. I wanted to. So I had to overwork to prove to the boys that I wasn't just doing a, a radio bit. Yeah. So I did yeah. everything I could to help. I did like, you know, the whole Kurt Angle story. I remember Kurt Angle and I, uh, Jim trusted me with the key to the back of the, uh, of the, the mall. Mm-hmm. And Kurt Angle and I showed up to, to train one day, you know, Kurt would do a week in Stanford, uh, with Dory Funk Jr. And he'd come home for a week. And, uh, the ring was, t- was, was pulled apart. So we had mm-hmm. to be re- basically rebuild the ring so we could work out for a couple hours. So Kurt was building the ring. Yeah. It was Kurt and I, we were the only two people there. We were literally the only so two people. So people were in the wondering if, if Kurt, like, well, he rolled in, he was the Olympic guy, like, he still paid his dues. Oh, to, listen, to an aspect. The, the funny Kurt and I, uh, boy, he, I think his first match on pay per view was against Stasiak. I think, sounds right, right? Yeah, he was called Meat. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. so and he was Stasiak. <laughs> he did a thing with Taz for a minute. Yeah. So the first match, and he and I had worked that match, that exact match, mm-hmm. so many times. That I was so excited to watch it, and I was watching it on pay per view. My wife's like, and I and I was calling every spot, mm-hmm. just making sure that they were crisp. And and she's like, "Would you just shut up?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, okay, okay, okay." It's awesome. Yeah. So he did absolutely. Kurt Angle paid his dues. No, no doubt about it. A hundred percent. That's awesome. Um, and it's amazing to be kind of look at that and now like his you know post career for him now too. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still I'm still friends with Kurt. Kurt's a great guy. Um. I, I remember before, I remember before he went to it. So Vince offered him a, a ton of money mm-hmm. at the beginning mm-hmm. and he said, no. Mm-hmm. And the reason he said no. And, and, and Kurt, if you're watching, if I hope I get this story right, but basically I remember we were sitting at, uh, at an advertising agency down in, uh, down in station square, if I remember this correctly. And if I remember the story correctly, Vince offered him a ton of money and he drove and on his way back down, um, he didn't appear at an ECW show. Mm-hmm. And this was the infamous uh, crucifix night. Wasn't yes. It? Yeah. And he said, and he goes to me, he's like, Bob, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, dude, they crucified a guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? And, and I, don't, I don't remember who the wrestlers were. He's like, he's like, I just want an Olympic gold medal. Like, I can't, mm-hmm. I don't know if I can do this. I was like, dude, you're not going to make the money the Vince McMahon offered you. Mm-hmm. He did the TV thing for a while. And then later we talked 
And he's like, uh, I'm doing it. He goes, I'm, 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 I'm doing it. I was like, well, and that, like I said, at that time they didn't have, you know, they would go to Stanford, work out with Dory Funk Jr. and come back. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, we, we did a lot together at the time and, and, uh, he's a great guy. I mean, he's, we, we had a lot of fun together. Awesome. So, um, I say you've been, I think you have probably wrestled for about every promotion. I, I, let's say every promotion that's more than five years old here in the, in the area. I probably have. Um, you know, the, the, uh, IWC thing, mm-hmm. I, I think since the last time we talked, so the IWC thing was, uh, was, uh, there was a company called RTN studios mm-hmm. and they were developing television shows. Um, and I, and that, and one of the shows that we developed, um, that came to me was this IWC show. We developed a, a show, um, a, a new that's a, show. That's what we were calling you guys founding fathers those years ago. That wasn't just a cute faction name. Like you were literally there. So, well, I created the it. So I, yeah. so, so, so the reason it's called the international wrestling cartel mm-hmm. is because at the time when we started it, the television show, the Sopranos was gigantic and we thought the word cartel really fit the mo- the the mold of what they were doing. So we were de- we developed the IWC for a for Dish Network, mm-hmm. okay, for the Dish Network and for um they were creating something called like the Man Channel. Mm-hmm. Now if some now if I remember correctly, the Man Channel ended up launching on Dish Network, but I think it became Spike TV. It just never happened. We never got the deal. Like, it, it kind of morphed into because I think I think Spike TV uh like TNN became Spike TV at one point. Yeah, so I don't like like the idea kind of just modified. Yeah, but but we were developing Mm -hmm. TV wrestling for Dish Network Mm -hmm. specifically for Dish Network, and uh, and and we created this IWC International Wrestling Cartel, and we did TV tapings. We did uh, a TV taping at their studios. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we took uh, two limousines and pulled them in as backdrops to give that whole cartel, um, that whole mafioso kind of thing. And then we did a TV taping at the Pepsi Roadhouse. Uh, a friend of mine, AJ, still, if he can find them, has all the beta recordings oh, of the original IWC. I would love to see those. Those, those got to make their way you, to YouTube. You just can't imagine them, right? <laughs> so what happened was um, when, you know, our, it didn't work out. It just didn't work out for yeah, whatever reasons, yeah. business-wise. So they said to me, they're like, listen, we don't have the money to pay you for all your work. Because we were developing other TV shows, too. Yeah. We did a, 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 a nightclub show called The Echo Lounge. So I was, I was actually working for RTN doing multiple platforms of, of development. So mm-hmm. one was a wrestling show. One was a – there was a thing called TV One, which kids would watch in school. So we were developing like a news story for TV One. We were developing all these different things, right? So um, uh, they, it just didn't work out. So they said, we, we don't have the, the money to pay you. And I was like, fine. They're like, well, so we're giving you IWC. So they, uh, so since I saw you last, I was in my, I was in my basement probably five years ago mm-hmm. and I found a box and in the box was all the copyrights, all the trademarks oh, wow. and all of the, the logo rights for, and, and they, they did a great job because they thought they were launching a TV show. Yeah, they, and they, and this they, was done by a company that knows how to do this for television, correct, correct. has everything locked down. So they had signed over all of the rights of the IWC over to me. Yeah. So to this day, technically, I own the name, the International Wrestling Cartel, or the copyright. I don't know how that works. Copyrights, trademarks, all those kinds of things for IWC. And I actually found, uh, I, just, I just showed <laughs> somebody the other day, I just found on my phone the original IWC websites. Oh wow! Yeah, which are which are so antiquated. And, yeah, and, and and the results are pretty cool. Um, but I found them all. I found them in a box in my basement. All of these, and I found all the original logos. And they did, but they it's so interesting. So they they trademarked uh, IWC, International WC. They like did every like, like every element of it. Of it. Mm-hmm. Every element, of and that's it. like I mean that's that's you're putting money down on each one of those instances. We've done we've done copyrights for right. some client podcasts, and yep. it's like doing it this way, yep. doing this way, have the marks, send a piece of yes, you know, uh, show this on merchandise to do Correct. that. Like, yep, and which was I mean I mean. What we were talking two thousand about two thousand one ish when I found it. No, no, when when you were originally doing this. Oh wow! So that was like it's not it's not through a government website like today. <laughs> Probably two. If I had to guess, I would guess it would be about two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the, the IW and then the, the IWC just became. So once again, I just wanted a place that the boys could work. Mm-hmm. Uh, that first year, I, I ran as many shows as I could. Um, and, and I, and all I did was say, okay, how much do you guys want? So if a guy wanted, you know, 50 bucks, 75 bucks, and I, and I agreed. So if everybody said, all right, we're good for 50 bucks, 75, but whatever that amount of money was, I added it up. 
I added my ring rental in. Uh, you know, any fees are involved. And, and, and this is this is a shoot. And just for my time and effort for the show, I would uh, I would I would put uh, either 100 or 200 dollars on top of it. That's all I made. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when we first started, then we decided to do the Emerald Room, which is now that they just completely redid it into a big night, a big uh, a music venue in McKee's Rocks. Hmm. And Jimmy Vegas, God bless his soul would go out all over McKee's Rocks and all over wherever he could hanging posters. Jimmy Vegas hang, hung more original IWC posters than any human being ever. Talk about paying your dues. Mm -hmm. um, but the Roxian. Have you heard about the Roxian? Brand new multi-million dollar venue in McKee's Rocks. Okay. That was the original home of IWC. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So if any of you guys go nightclubbing over at yeah. the Roxian, yeah, you get a little bit of wrestling history over yeah. there. And I mean, you know, and it, I mean, gosh, we had some. And it, it was a cool venue. It was, mm -hmm. it was a cool venue. We all we all changed on a stage. It was awesome. So it went from that, and and, and eventually this kind of mostly got handed over to Norm Connors. Right. Was I think probably the longest running. Uh, I know yep. when I started going and discovering what you guys were doing down there. Um, so and then that became like the bed where. AJ Styles and CM Punk's were coming through and Samoa Joe's and Christopher Daniels. Yep. So, and so then, my deal with IWC always was, um, if just give the boys a place to work, mm -hmm. that's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. I was like, if you can make a fortune off of shows, make a fortune. But when you don't want to do it anymore, just give it to somebody, mm -hmm. just give it to them, mm -hmm. give it to somebody that will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So like when Norm could just decide not to do it anymore, and then Chuck did. Just give it to Chuck. Mm -hmm. Don't sell it to Chuck. Don't make money off that. If you make a million dollars from all the shows, which no pro wrestling promoter makes a million dollars off the show. <laughs> Let's be honest about but it. But whatever you can make, make. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, you don't want to do it anymore. You're burnt out. Give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then when they're done, give it to somebody else. So and, and that it, was the, so that was the mindset of IWCs. Just give the boys a place to work. So it became it came it became a pro wrestling pay it forward. Yep, that was that was the plan. I don't know what I don't know if there's been any transactions differently then, but that was the initial plan on what on what we wanted to do with it, or mm -hmm. what I wanted to do if that was my vision, and and I and I lived it too. I mean, because I've always always been in the bar restaurant industry, mm -hmm. and my door guys were always pro wrestlers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Corey Graves, mm -hmm. Corey Graves, and, and John Bolin. I mean, when I had a place on the North Shore. They were my they they were my two guys. They were with me every day. When my wife would like close the restaurant on the North Shore at, at midnight, Corey Graves would be the one that would walk my wife to the car. I mean, my mom used to my mom used to yell and scream at them like, "You want to be a wrestler? You need to eat more." <laughs> da da da. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Sam Adonis, all mm -hmm. of those guys. I mean, they I I always employed wrestlers because i know how hard it is to make it and if you can have at the, the the kind of income um you know gory i mean gory worked for me in multiple occasions in multiple mm -hmm. locations mm -hmm. and i always try to give the guys i mean for god's sakes uh, jimmy vegas i jokingly told him i ruined his life twice when uh when i, I hired him to he was my manager because i trust him there's nothing more important these are my guys like i always wanted to give the guys a place to you know it's okay so you're gone this weekend you can't work this weekend but if you don't have shows next weekend i'll pay you to run the door or do whatever mm -hmm. that, that was always my plan and that's always I mean, you, you always hear about that i mean i, mean, I think cory graves is still mentions uh his days bouncing on his new podcast. Does he <laughs> so really? I, I know he's he's mentioned yeah. somewhere along the way about paying the dues and stuff. I don't know if he'd want to so. talk about it, but this that's where he met his first wife. <laughs> she was one of my bartenders. We won't <laughs> talk about that one. We'll, we'll, we'll move that on. Let's we'll move that, that on. If Corey wants to bring it up on his podcast. No, but, he uh, won't. Yeah, no. <laughs> but um, and, and we got a lot of people in the chat here. I know uh, Nick's saying that about that Emerald uh, Roxion being Emerald a concert Drew. venue uh, is absolutely beautiful right now. Yep. Uh, I think some other people are kind of reminiscing about uh old pwx and iwc in here it looks like so uh, uh beyond that let's say you know and I, I i would see you pop up pop up at iwc eventually and i was like oh hey you know and of course we had our interview 11 years ago and i think we talked about this uh, uh concept before um so so tell me like what have you been up to like lately i know i see you at case wa yeah. um which are always a fun <laughs> show i it is somebody asked me is like when you're not working a weekend why do you go to KSWA and just watch more wrestling? I'm just because I just want to fucking Ross wrestling. That's right? <laughs> just so, it. So, so let me just tell you, I got I am having an absolute blast wrestling, mm -hmm. and and I uh, I'm having I'm having fun. I mean, I mean, I'm legitimately 
having a good time. The KSWA has this following mm -hmm. that no matter where they go, and I, and, and I think I told you this before we started, I think they ran 27, 27 shows. Ridiculous. There's no other Crazy. independent professional wrestling organization in America running 27 shows. Mm -hmm. And the locker room is awesome. Everybody gets along. And the sh I'm having a blast. I am having so much fun. And, and it's so funny. My brother's like, why are you doing this? My brother's like, why do, you, why do you still do this? I'm not young. Mm -hmm. Although I feel better than I felt ever. Mm -hmm. I went through a period of time where I was really out of shape and I gained a lot of weight and I, and I lost like 40 pounds and I feel better. I don't, and then he reached a point. He's like, you know something? Why not do it? Do it till, like, why shouldn't I do it? Um, it's fun. And, and I, I, I told uh, uh, Lou, maybe at the last show, I'm like, whatever secret That's, recipe uh, you Lou have. Lou Marconi. Right. No, no, no. Or uh, Lou. Uh, Lou Martin. Lou Martin. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so I, I said to Lou, I'm like, I'm like, listen, I'm like, whatever your your eleven herbs and spices are, yeah. Don't share it with anybody, <laughs> because you have got this cool thing. No matter where they run, mm -hmm. they get great crowds. Mm -hmm. And listen, it's not by accident. Mm -hmm. they, they did. They didn't accidentally become successful. They didn't accidentally, and, and and Lou, please don't be mad at me if you're watching. I don't know how many years you've been running. They don't accidentally. <laughs> get this successful. I mean, they're the show on Saturday mm -hmm. at the spirit lounge. They will. Ha I, I'm assuming if it's like the other shows, they're going to be turning away hundreds of people. People will be lined up for this show. The, the, the toy drive show mm -hmm. this Saturday, three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So if, if you think you're going to be a worker, that's going to sneak in the back door. There's no back door. <laughs> and you better get there at noon for a seven o'clock show. So it, it is interesting, and I said this too. Like, like there's three shows happening Saturday in the Pittsburgh area. Okay, and and I don't think anybody's going to see a lower house than they normally do because of it. Like it, it's it's KSWA fans are having this thing over here. Other fans are doing you know other companies over here, and it's this really cool thing that happens. Like yep. like you know if one of you guys go away, I don't think you're going to another promotion like right. fan wise, right? Because they they don't know or care about it. You know, right. So it, it's this really interesting, like everybody's like a neighbor and doesn't know they're a neighbor fan wise. It seems that's kind of interesting. Right. It was. And, and by the way, it wasn't always like that. No, absolutely. Not. I mean, I, I mean, just, just like seeing that. over the last 10 years. Watching I mean, there, there was there were there were there were poster wars mm -hmm. back in the day mm -hmm. where promotions were tearing down each other's posters. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the one thing I think that KSWA does very well. Is they is they create characters that people love. Mm -hmm. They create characters that people hate, and the fans don't. There, there's the, the fans just want to boo. Mm -hmm. The fans just want to cheer. The fans just want to be entertained. That's it, mm -hmm. and 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 that's why I love it because I love it because I listen. I'm not. It's not overcomplicated. It's not <laughs> like I some tell, of the promotions. I, I tell people all the time. I'm like, I'm like, let's go out there and just let's tell an amazing story. Mm -hmm. Let's put on a great show and, and 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 let's feel this crowd. Like I'm not one of those guys. Like if you want to talk through every spot of your match, like I'm sorry, it's not like let's. I don't know what they're gonna want mm -hmm. when we walk through that curtain. I'm not sure what they want tonight. Mm -hmm. So, but we're gonna give them what they want. And I don't know that they want what you want or what I want back here. When we walk through that curtain, we need to give them what they want. And KSWA does a great job. I mean, I'm having so much fun. And, and like, I, I'm, I'm actually excited about Saturday night. Mm. Uh, I'm wrestling Shane Starr, who I plan on breaking many body parts of his. <laughs> and and, 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 and I'm, 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 I'm actually fired up for it. I, I mean, because it is such a great time. It just it is it, it 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 it's so much fun to wrestle again. It's awesome. Um, I remember one. I, I want to talk about this because I remember um, before before uh, I, I well probably around when I started going to KSWA on my weekends off. I went to some old PWX shows, and I remember one time accompanying my friend uh, from KDK and uh, the weatherman. I remember his name was Smiley Ron Smiley, Ron Smiley and you were having. You were having a match with one Rev Ron Hunt, who I believe was also working at KDK at the time. Yes. So it was kind of a battle of the local media wars. <laughs> which, which, by the way, mm -hmm. I, so do you remember that match at all? I do. I was ringside for it. I yeah, I remember a lot of it. I remember you, you guys 
getting at Ron at ringside and getting him riled up. That was a that was a trip. So so the one thing I actually asked to wrestle Rev, mm-hmm. and and the one thing I I was like, man, he's got he's got this he's got these great pipes. Mm-hmm. He's got this great 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 ring entrance. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I said I remember saying, well, once you enter the ring, you lose that at the time. Right now he's. This yeah. is years ago. Yeah. I'm like, like your character needs to be the, from, from the point you walk through that curtain to the point you walk back out through that curtain. Everything you do on the stage, on the ramp, in the ring, as you wrestle, has to be that character. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want to work him. I want to help him with that. And And that match was all about that. About me being a guy, a guy that saw, and, and listen, maybe you could look back and say Rev didn't need any of that. Maybe my ego is saying he did. I don't know. But it, we had we, we told a great story. And we, when we got out of that match, both of us were like, dude, we just went 15 strong. Mm-hmm. Like We just went 15 legit strong and, and didn't stop. It was a very good match. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, because not many people say that about me anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I, but, so I loved that was a great match with Rev. Yeah, and that was, that was probably about what three or four years ago, right? Uh, sure. I was gonna make. Sure. Asking, are you asking me to remember something? No, 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 no. Good, because no, no, that's no, my no, biggest no, no, no. failure <laughs> for remembering stuff. All right. Uh, well, hey, oh geez, the name's popping up here again. Uh, I'm going to go into some uh, uh, finisher questions here, but uh, if you guys have any questions for me to pop in here for Bubba, uh, and as we close out this interview, please hit us up on the Facebook um, uh, stream if you're with us live over at the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page, and we'll be sure to roll them in here. By the way, real quick, at some point before before you cut me off and kick me out. I, I, I will I do want to share with you my proud my proudest moment in professional wrestling has nothing to do with a match. So whenever well, you want I, to hear I that story, go ahead. Me actually, go, let's go ahead and hear it. So uh, my proudest moment that has anything to do with the world of professional wrestling uh, is Connor's cure. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, obviously, uh, Connor M- McKaylick, uh, his mom contacted me mm-hmm. at the radio station and said um, to say, called. And told me Connor's story and said, all he wants to meet is, da- is Daniel Bryan. Is there anything I can do to help? And Jerry McDevitt, who is Vince McMahon's personal attorney, mm-hmm. is a very close friend of mine. And, uh, and, and I called Jerry. Jerry negotiated my first radio contract ever. And we've been close for years. So um, I called Jerry and I'm like, can we make this happen? And I told him the whole story. And this was all happening real time, live on the air. Um, although Jerry wasn't on the air. I talked to him off the air. And he goes, absolutely I said you're going to confirm this right he goes i'm vince's attorney <laughs> so i go I, I call the mom and uh and uh and connor you know we made it happen and then daniel did so when, when they came in town then daniel bryan did my show mm-hmm. came live in the studio so told him the whole story had no idea and then of course that night connor met daniel bryan who's at that time tag team with kane and that's the footage that we see yeah all the yeah. time so they uh they um they um they, they asked me to come down i'm like it's not about me it's not about Bubba. It's about this little boy who's obviously fighting cancer and meeting his hero. But the coolest part about it is uh, when I got and and I and I know there's other people I've heard and I, I know there's other people in in the city that claim and I don't know why you'd ever want to take credit for it, but we're like, oh, I'm the I'm, I started Connor's Cure. I, I won't <laughs> say any names, but I got an email from Stephanie McMahon, um, thanking me saying i just she she literally she's like i just found out that that you're the reason through our attorney Mm -hmm. and she sent me this amazing email uh and then i ended up going uh to an event at children's hospital where i got a chance to to spend some time with stephanie and triple h and uh and you know and help them with some of their outreach and charitable initiatives so the the big the 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 coolest thing i ever did in the world of professional wrestling never involved a match it was the the ability to allow a little boy Mm -hmm. to Meet Daniel Bryan, which of course since then has turned into uh, what WWE has done with it since then is just uh, awe inspiring and amazing. Uh, the amount of the millions of dollars that that they have raised is, is pretty unbelievable. So thank you for allowing me to tell that story because I don't I don't think anybody knows that. Absolutely, yeah, that's awesome. So now the, whatever you got for me. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask the best and worst about pro wrestling. That's usually one of my standards, but I think you just gave me the best. That's my best. That's absolutely the best. I mean, yeah. to be able to have that connection and make yeah. something like that happen. Yeah. What is the worst? Let's go uh, the other way. Compound fracture of my right <laughs> hand, bone sticking out, and I finished wow. the match. 
Wow. I was I was working a a show at up on Mount Washington at a church. I was wrestling some guy under a hood. I used to do this bulldog spot off the top rope. Mm-hmm. I did the bulldog. My entire body rotated. All of my weight and all of the workers' weight hit. Boom, bone, boop, right out of right out of my hand. Um, and I, I finished the match. Like the bone was sticking out of my hand. And it was funny because funny not funny. I had a jeep by a Wrangler at the time, and my wife was was, was pregnant, which didn't go well. And uh, but I had to go do a radio station appearance. So I met, met with the doctor. He goes, "Well, it's obviously broken." I said, "Well, I can't go to the hospital now." So we took a coke can. And jammed it in my hand like this, and then wrapped it up. I had to drive a stick shift with it, with a bone stick out of my hand. I went and did a radio station appearance for two hours that night after the wrestling show, and then drove myself to the hospital. That's the worst. That is wow. And you can't see it, but I still got the scar to prove it. <laughs> I was just I was just watching the um they did the uh, Untold on on Sting's time in WWE and talked about that match with Seth Rollins where he like kept going even though he was basically almost was paralyzed yep and they're talking about like that they, they have this discussion there about this weird thing where a wrestler has to finish the thing has, has to finish the job and weird? you finish two jobs yeah. is that crazy <laughs> i know yeah so it, it it is weird i don't know I was, uh, wrestlers we're, we're a different breed mm-hmm. there's no doubt about there's, that there's a there's there, there's a reason if somebody isn't like kind of keeping up on the work ethic that they kind of get bounced pretty very pretty quickly. good um awesome so um See if there's anything else here from the chat room. So what's coming up here? Obviously, you got Fan Fest as of this recording this weekend. Yep. KSWA, I know you pop up there. Yep. You still got a belt over there? Yep. I, I, I Not only do I have the... Uh, I should have brought it with me. See, I, see, I didn't even think about that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I keep it in storage. I, I I have it above my mantle. Oh, okay. I, I really don't even I, that's have That's where a, it needs to go. I really don't even have a mantle, though. That's the problem. So, uh, so yeah. So, I am the... Uh, so, I was the... Uh, me and Denny Gregory were the tag team champions. Oh, geez. And then, uh, and then we dropped the belts. He became the heavyweight champion. I became mm-hmm. the five-star champion. Mm-hmm. Then I was Bubba two belts because I was the five-star champion and the golden triangle champion. And and, 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 and I think I, I might have caught one of the shows with you guys as a team. And that is... Uh, uh, look out crowd because i mean the two biggest mouthpieces let me just say the two biggest mouths in pro wrestling around yes. <laughs> we have fun we have fun yes i think i i think kswa management and ownership get nervous mm-hmm. when we're together but it's a good kind of nervous mm-hmm. uh so then i uh, dropped the the five star I'm the, I'm the golden triangle champion um and and i I've, I've had a blast doing it um it's sort of coming full circle this uh saturday night at fan fest down in uh lawrenceville uh, KSWA.net, by the way, um, because I'm wrestling <laughs> Shane Starr, who, by the way, to get, go to go full circle, he is one of the guys that beat Denny and I for the tag team belts. Mm. So this is this is a, you know a, a match a year and a half in the making. So and 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 it's gonna be a great match. I mean, if if you like watching him get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good time out there. We got a we got a comment out here from Aaron Lester. Bubba put Pittsburgh Pro Wrestling on the map in the '90s, in my opinion. Oh, thank you. There Very you kind. I don't, I don't know necessarily that I did that, but I kind of brought some attention to uh, to something I loved. Mm-hmm. And and once again, to, to to go full circle to the beginning of the interview, um, I was a radio guy, and I was a wrestler. And I didn't want anybody to, to uh, when I was doing radio, I was doing radio. When I was doing wrestling, I was doing wrestling. Mm-hmm. But if somehow my presence in wrestling as the radio guy mm-hmm. uh, could help wrestling, and and Aaron, if you think I was a part of uh, the resurgence, I appreciate that, and I'm humbled by that. Uh, let me ask you that. That um, uh, you know, how much does wrestling come up on your radio show? A lot, a, a lot. So yeah. so I, I don't have any re- real talent. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm just me. So the guy that's sitting here on this amazing couch mm-hmm. uh, talking to you now is the same guy that will be talking on the radio tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I have is me, and, and, and I'm honest, I'm transparent, I am who I am. So if it's happening in my real life, it's happening on my radio show with Melanie. And uh, it's kind of cool because wrestling's a par- big part of my life. It's a big part of my life for years. Mm-hmm. So it's a part of the show. Melanie gives me a hard time. I tried to get her to be my manager for my match on Saturday, and she shot me down. That's why I don't like her. <laughs> why would somebody not be and want to be out there? Right. I mean, right? Especially like, for this show. Yeah. Standing room only but crowd. Out there the energy. Of- listen, the energy in the building on Saturday mm-hmm. is going to be insane from the first bell to the last bell. So much fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're yeah. in the Pittsburgh area, please 
go check that out consider kswa amongst the many many choices on saturday night uh you guys are gonna have a lot of fun and hank hudson has appeared in the chat room no he has yes he just popped up we were just talking about you at the top hank of the show hudson. Yeah, hank hudson is my hero <laughs> <laughs> Hank Hudson. Hank Hudson uh, was in one angle at, at an original IWC show. I asked him about it. He doesn't really remember it. I had a friend of mine dress up as the Easter Bunny because the show was on McKee's Rocks uh, mm -hmm. right around Easter time. He came out uh, as the Easter Bunny, and I think he gave uh, – I think he gave, either Hank Hudson gave the Easter Bunny a low blow <laughs> or the Easter Bunny gave <laughs> Hank Hudson a low blow. I don't remember which way it went. But my God, I, then Hank Hudson got mad at me because then he, he claimed I replaced him with my buddy as an announcer, mm -hmm. but it's all part of an angle. I love it. Hank Hudson, love you're the it. best. Love it. Uh, a lot of people popping up there in the chat room. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, again, you're all over the place. Where can people see you? Online, on the radio, whatever media you're on these days. Okay. So uh, what's the, here's the, here comes the list, right? Okay, ready? <laughs> so I'll, I'll make it as short as possible. No. Uh, obviously, Bubba Show, 100.7 stars, starpittsburgh.com. Uh, Facebook.com slash Star Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Facebook.com slash Bubba Show 1007. Uh, I've got restaurants, uh, Bubba's Gourmet Burgers and Beer. I've got a location in Tridelphia, West Virginia, in the Highlands. Uh, the Washington Brewery on East Maiden Street in Washington and inside the Prince Cape Arena in South Point. I'm opening up taco places. Really? And get and, wait, and you're going to love this. I Ready? Try to not smile when I say the name of my taco places. I'm going to challenge you. I'm opening a taco place in South Fayette, Bridgeville. And I'm opening one on Murray Avenue and Squirrel Hill. Okay? Don't smile when I say the name of the taco place. Ready? Lucha Street Tacos. Yes, right? Thank you. Lucha Thank you. Street Tacos. That's the name of it. There's going to be masks everywhere. That's, That's going to be the name awesome. of my taco Have, you, have place. you seen the Lucha? Like in San Diego, there's a Lucha Taco. It's called, it, they're, they're, but it's called Lucha Libre Tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just doing Lucha But you're doing a street, street taco version. Tacos, Got yeah. Got it. I uh, love it. I and, love and, it. And at the restaurants, and obviously, uh, if you're looking uh, to, to catch me wrestle, uh, KSWA, uh, can see all the shows. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think out of 27, I think I made 22 of them. <laughs> uh kswa.net i worked a, i think i worked four matches in one night how about that i mean I, it seems like i keep missing you we yeah. i i was looking forward to seeing you in march because i had heat with you on twitter for a minute <laughs> so. and by the way if you, if you i always say have you been to a brawl under the bridge show i have not it's always something's going on or i'm traveling but i see pictures from it and it looks like such a great event it is the lights and and everything and, and I, I know there was what a ladder match that had like lawless and yinza or oh, something yeah Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. And, the, and, the, and this year, it, was, it literally, uh, I think it was a, a feels like temperature of 110. And I had to work twice, mm -hmm. back to back. Uh, is there anywhere else? So the rest, so, so obviously, listen on the radio, five to ten, 100.7 star. Bubba show with me and Melanie Taylor, who's amazing. Uh, the restaurants, wrestling. That's probably I don't I don't know. I think that's enough. Right? That's enough. Come that's on. Enough. Listen. And oh, and I coach high school baseball. Jeez. I coach uh, high school baseball for uh, the South Fayette Lions. Yeah. Well, the, uh, we were the WPIAL football uh, baseball champions two years ago, nice. and we're going to defend this year. Nice. He's a wrestler, radio personality, entrepreneur. Bubba the Bulldog, thank you so much for joining us here on the awesome. show. I hope I did, didn't disappoint you after 11 no, years. No, absolutely not. It's Good. everything I wanted. Uh, okay. So uh, thank you, everybody. Please go check him out and check out all the promotions. Check out everything going on, again, over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us. I know there's got to be some Bubba the Bulldog on IndieWrestling.us over there? the years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got some back catalog up there. Really? Sure. We got some Founding Father stuff up there. Oh, I got to see of that. It, actually, a lot of it's on YouTube right now. So. Well, I want to see wherever you got that match with my, me having a beard. <laughs> Where did you get that from? I didn't even know I ever that had a the, beer. Uh, go look up PWX's YouTube. We got some classic matches that I was pulling a few months oh, ago when we were going through those catalogs. I got to so, see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know on YouTube you can watch CM Punk d dive off the most rickety cage ever onto my body. <laughs> yes. True story. CM yes. Punk, the cage was so rickety that the trainees actually had to hold the mm -hmm. cage. And that was the same exact match where I accidentally threw the door is that the cage hard? into norm connor's head yes it was an accident everybody wants me to admit that's the that's what i was i thought that question was coming did i do that on purpose and <laughs> i'm telling you it was a total accident and i have no reason to norm and i are still friends so i if i wanted to, it was, i actually felt horrible about it I, I, remember, I, I remember being told about that story and then some reason somebody put together i can't remember if it was me or not um a video of that happening to evanescence just over and over again. oh yeah <laughs> so. it was, and i, and I 
felt awful about it. Yeah. And then, but you know, that was a great match because it was Candido, uh, Michael Shane, mm-hmm. and Punk. But the reason Punk was even in the match was because Bam Bam Bigelow was supposed to be a match and didn't show up. <laughs> Yeah, and that time it's so yeah, funny. Yeah, think, think in that era, somebody in that audience was disappointed that they got CM Punk instead of Bam Bam. Right? Bigelow. Think about that. Right? Is that crazy? What was that like two thousand four or five? Oh my gosh! Why do you keep asking I don't me every question? It was me, <laughs> Vegas, and Denny in the in, inside yeah, the cage. Yeah. But but and the cage was. I'm just so, talking errors. I'm just the, talking errors. The, the, co- the cage was so tall mm-hmm. and so rickety, mm-hmm. and, the, and when I say rickety, just they couldn't they couldn't attach it well. And when 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 and when we were talking about it, and he's like, "I'll do it." And 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 I looked at him when he jumped up there, and at that time, at that point, I was I was over as a heel, and the people were chanting, "Die, Bubba, die!" By the way, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 I looked up there, and I'm like, "One of us is definitely not going to end this well." And we did. We ended fine. I gotta say, just because I saw him pop up in the chat room, uh, I, you know, we talked about kind of that origin of the word cartel, which I always found a mystery until I talked to you that first yep. interview. Um, I, I, and I love that eventually we did get the Gambino brothers. Oh, I love it. Gambino brothers <laughs> for life. Gambino I love brothers it. moving company. That is mm-hmm. awesome. I, see, I didn't even think about that, but see, that, it, yeah. came, it came around. It took a couple years, but it came around. I love it. Thank you so much, Bubba. Thank you everybody. Again, check Thank out you. everything. Indie wrestling. Not us. Wrestling. Ma'am show.com. We got many, many other podcasts for you to check out. And, uh, we're getting a lot of stuff, uh, in the can here. So you can have a lot of interviews over your Christmas break. So, uh, stay tuned for all that stuff. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, please support indie wrestling and, uh, terrestrial radio. That's awesome. So, all right, uh, stream. Uh, we're going to be resetting the stream here for our next interview, uh, and in a moment, what I don't think I had officially announced. This is the surprise interview. So um, we'll be right back after this. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.